particular branch of subsequent developments. But I'm going to focus on, in my remaining two minutes or so, I'm going to focus on two of what I think are particularly interesting uh, developments. And uh, Witten's twister string theory, it, it gives you some beautiful mathematical insight into scattering amplitudes, but it doesn't really explain to you why the answer should be so simple. Uh, you know, we already have Lagrangians, and we know Lagrangians don't give you manifestly simple results. So why should it be that twister string theory, something that sounds even more formidable than a Lagrangian, should give you simple results? So unexpected simplicity is sometimes the result of a hidden symmetry. And in the case of Yang-Mills theory, that symmetry is something called dual conformal symmetry, which has emerged in the last few years. Now, originally, dual conformal symmetry was actually observed in supersymmetric Yang-Mills theory because people looked at the, the classes of diagrams which contributed to the amplitude up through five loops. And remarkably, the graphs all shared some very peculiar graph theoretic properties um, which puzzled people at first until they realized that those particular properties could be explained if you hypothesize something called dual conformal symmetry, which I'll explain on the next slide. But remarkably, it's also an exact symmetry of classical QCD that has remained hidden, uh, unknown, for many decades. So here's what dual conformal symmetry is. Say you've got your n gluons that you're scattering, and they have n four momenta k. Of course, by momentum conservation, they all have to sum to zero. Let's solve that constraint by parameterizing the k's in terms of what I'm going to call duvit dual variables, where I express k1 as x1 minus x2, k2 as x2 minus x3, etc. So here's a, a transformation between the n k's and n x's, which has the nice feature of making momentum conservation manifest. Dual conformal symmetry is then the statement, of course you know that QCD amplitudes at tree level are already uh, invariant under conformal transformations, ordinary conformal transformations. But the remarkable thing is that they are also invariant under conformal transformations on these x's. And again, I emphasize that th there's absolutely no hint of this symmetry in the Lagrangian of the theory. So there's a symmetry of QCD which has gone unnoticed for many, many decades, and it's one of the things that's responsible for the remarkable simplicity we see. The last thing I want to mention in my remaining minute is an even more mysterious surprise that I, I will have almost no time to talk about. And that surprise is the observation. There's absolutely, well, there's no very solid understanding at the moment of why this has to be true. Uh, at the moment, it's just based on tedious calculations that people have done to, to check on a case-by-case -case basis for certain examples that it's true. But the statement is the following, that if you look at the n-particle MHV gluon scattering amplitude, it is exactly equal to a certain Wilson loop. Uh, and the Okay, so Wilson loop, uh, expectation values of Wilson loops are other and very nice gauge invariant observables that you can calculate and study in, in Yang-Mills theory. And the corresponding Wilson loop is, is built as follows. You take your, your null vectors, which you know have to sum to zero by momentum conservation, and you stack them one after the other, end to end. By momentum conservation, they, closed a, they form a closed loop. Uh, it's a light-like polygon. It's a polygon with n sides, and each side here um, is null in Minkowski space because these are all corresponding to null vectors of your gluons. And the statement, the remarkable statement, is that if you calculate the expectation value of this Wilson loop, it is exactly equal to the corresponding MHV gluon scattering amplitude. Apparently, order by order in perturbation theory, and also non-perturbatively, at least in, in supersymmetric Yang-Mills theory. So it's truly remarkable, and uh, I don't really know what to make of it at this point, but I just thought it would be interesting to mention it. So the conclusion is that I've reviewed only a very small portion of the recently discovered magic that we've seen in the S-matrix of Yang-Mills theory. 
I've mentioned twister string theory, dual conformal invariance, and uh, you know, moving at the speed of light, I passed briefly past the Wilson loop uh, amplitude duality. These and many other recent developments help to shed some light on the amazing and useful simplicity of scattering amplitudes. And uh, uh, with that, I thank you for your time listening to my talk. And I want to conclude, of course, by wishing Jerry a uh, <laughs> happy uh, Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> so, congratulations. <laughs> Well, there, there, there are two things. Uh, um, well, basically, by by the same method, right? So what we do is that uh, QCD is asymptotically free, which means that you know that at very high energies, uh, you know when the elementary partons inside. So pr protons are nasty objects, but when they collide with each other at very high energies, what's what's really happening is that uh, a small number of elementary partons are interacting with each other at very, very high energies. And at those high energies, these kinds of approximations, namely the approximations of having massless particles, are excellent approximations. Then to build up the full scattering amplitude, you have to do a complicated procedure of convolving those scattering amplitudes with parton distribution functions, which tell you, uh, which tell you, you know, the fractional makeup of a proton and things like that. Uh, those those quantities are are not are uh, parton distribution functions and other things like that are at our core at our current level of understanding are consequences essentially of low energy QCD or of the the complicated part of QCD if you will they're the looming mountains ahead that the, the pioneers several decades ago were ambitiously looking forward to uh, whereas we for the moment we're content to look first understand in as complete detail as we can. The, the essential high energy part of the process. So there's this kind of like a zero mass approximation. Exactly. Yeah. Which is which is valid at high energies. Yeah. Any other questions?